This is my 72 volt lithium polymer e-bike battery. I've been getting this pack together over the last few months and now I have it in its final configuration. It is controlled and managed using a Bluetooth BMS. So all I have to do is use a single XT60 plug to charge and this anti-spark XT90 for plugging into the control unit of the bike. I can monitor the health of the pack and set various safety limits as well as security options via the BMS. In this video, I'm going to do an overview of the wiring of the pack and the operation of the BMS. This is the bag that I'm using for my battery pack. I bought it from West Coast Electric Bikes. The wiring looms and Bluetooth BMS I got from Electric Race Technologies. I made some small modifications to the bag to accommodate the BMS and additional wiring that comes with it. I made a small holes for the balance leads and also small holes in it for the temperature sensors. When I get some time, I'm gonna make it a bit more professional and I'm also gonna add a waterproof cover for the top to protect the BMS and prevent any water ingress into the wiring looms. There are two stacks of batteries here and together each of them comes out at 72 volts or 20S as it's known. These two stacks will be wired in series and then put into the two compartments on each side of the bag. They are connected to a parallel harness which takes the battery power to your motor control unit. The balance plugs connect up to the balance leads on each battery pack. I'm not going to show me doing this as it's pretty cramped and I'm not sure it's actually going to be helpful to people. So instead, I've created some wiring diagrams in Photoshop to illustrate the process instead. This diagram was made for ease of understanding and not total accuracy in terms of how it looks. But the first part of the setup is to wire the two sets of batteries in series so that the total voltage of each set is 20S or 72 volts. In the case of my battery pack, it is comprised of 16S, 24S and 23S LiPo packs. This gives a total of 20 individual cells spread over the five LiPo packs. These are connected together in series like you can see in the diagram. If you're using different size packs like I am, then the order you put them in in series will be dictated by the order of the balance plugs on the BMS. I suggest taking the time to label your batteries so that no mistakes are made when hooking them up. It is also very important to ensure that before connecting any packs into the harness, all the individual cells have the same charge. I ended up putting a four volt charge in every cell. So I charged the 6S packs to 24 volts, the 4S packs to 16 volts and 3S packs to 12 volts using a balance charger. The BMS will be able to take care of small imbalances in the cells, but presumably not very large ones, so it's best to have them all within a 0.02 volt range of each other to start with. Once the packs are wired up with these voltages, they will give a total of 80 volts. This is identical on both series of batteries that will go in both sides of the pack. The two series harnesses then plug into the parallel harness and this then leads to a plug you would hook up to your motor controller in order to discharge the battery. The next part is to connect the Bluetooth BMS, which is used to balance the charge between the individual cells in the battery pack. The BMS plugs into a port on the parallel harness and it communicates with the individual cells through balance leads. And for this, it's simply a case of ensuring that the correct balance lead is connected to the correct pack. To make it a relatively straightforward job, the wires are color coded. So for me, I have a pair of plugs with black labels that go to the two 6S packs in the series harnesses. The same is then done for the 4S and 3S packs. It's very important to ensure that the balance lead for the LiPo pack in the S1 position goes to the LiPo pack in the S1 position on the series harness. The BMS will be parallel balancing two packs. So it's essential that everything lines up so everything is color coded and numbered to avoid mistakes when I do my sequencing. Once all the connections have been made, the BMS and Bluetooth module will be powered on and you can connect to it via the phone app. So on Android, at least, the app is represented by this little elephant. And if you click on that, it brings up the dashboard. 
From here, if you click on the little tick in the bottom left corner, it brings you up with a percentage score for how well balanced your battery is. Up in the top left, if you click on a menu, it brings you up another set of options um, and that gets you into things like the battery state, parameter view, parameters, app settings, and something about the company. If you click on battery state, you get lots of information on the state of the battery, as well as the four temperature probes. Swiping left gets you a view of each of the individual 20 cells. In fact, it is 40 cells in total as the BMS is parallel balancing two sides. If there are any imbalances in the pack, they're going to show here. If you click on the app settings, you have the ability to set a password for the BMS and leave it in a locked state. The pack will not discharge until the password has been entered via the app. The speed limit feature I can't see myself using as I can govern it via the bike's display or controller. So far, I've only had a few short rides with this pack due to road conditions being pretty lethal right now but I've been very impressed with the power and punch that the cells provide as well as the ease of charging with the BMS. I hope to be able to show some good ride testing videos very soon. Cheers.